This is a quiz I gave my kids the other day over uh, distance formula, midpoint formula, solving quadratics multiple ways, and uh, the discriminants, which is a part of the quadratic formula that tells you how many and what type of solutions you have. So the first three questions were finding the distance and then the midpoints. So there is, of course, a distance formula, which is this. Distance equals the square root of the difference of the x's, so x1 minus x2 squared, plus the difference of your y's, y2, y1 minus y2 squared. Okay, you take the square root of all that stuff, and you've got yourself the distance. So if we apply that formula to this, the distance equals the square root of 2 minus negative 8 squared plus negative 4 minus 6 squared. Okay, you always do subtraction. So here's your 2. Here's your minus 8. So 2 minus minus 8 is going to be 10. Positive 10 squared because minus minus is a plus. Negative 4 minus 6 is negative 10, so plus negative 10 squared. And 10 squared is 100, and negative 10 squared is also 100. So it looks like this comes out to be the square root of 200. Okay, and since the problem says no decimals, that's exactly the answer that you're looking for. It is the square root of 200 units in between point A and point B. Okay, of course your calculator can tell you what that is, but your calculator doesn't help you think. Your thinking helps you think. Or your brain does, which everyone wants. So there's a distance formula. Midpoint formula is just the opposite, so we have to add your x's together. x plus x divided by 2, and add your y's together, y plus y divided by 2. Um, distance is always plus, so you never have to do plus or minus Are you gonna have when you're doing this. You will have the formulas, yes, so that you can use that. So midpoint for this problem is um, 2 minus 8 divided by 2. So adding, we're adding negatives, so the same thing as subtraction. And negative 4 plus 6 divided by 2 is, um, let's see, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Um, negative 4 plus 6 is positive 2. 2 over 2 is 1. So this thing is going to have a midpoint at negative 3, comma, 1. Okay? So distance is, um, in this case, a radical, uh, which is probably a little bit bigger than 10 and a half or so, maybe even 13. Maybe, ooh, bigger than 14, but smaller than 15. And the midpoint is at negative 3, positive 1. Okay, so hopefully you got that. I'm going to erase this midpoint over here so I have space to work the rest of these problems. Don't you mind? You can always rewind if you want to go back and see what they were. Okay, so of course you can pause the video and try it yourself. And then make sure you check your answer by fast forwarding. So here's a second way to do this using the Pythagorean theorem. So if I were at point A, which is negative positive 7, 1, so on your grid, that would be over here somewhere. So we'll call this A at positive 7, 1. And B is at negative 3, 9, which would be over here somewhere. Um, if you're talking about a grid, negative 3 is to the left. We're going to find the distance in between these two points. Literally, that's what we're doing. We're going to draw the graph. Nope, no drawing the graph, but I am going to count. So instead of using the formula, I'm going to make a right triangle. Because I know if I have a right triangle, I can solve this using the Pythagorean theorem, which is, of course, a derivation from the distance formula. So the difference in my x's, x1 minus x2, if I started at positive 7 and ended at negative 3, that means I've gone 10 units in the x direction. 
If I started at positive 1 and ended at positive 9, I've gone 8 units in the y direction. So according to Pythagoras, d squared equals 8 squared plus 10 squared. Okay, we would have gotten the same thing had we applied the distance formula and did our subtraction correctly. So solving this for d, d squared equals 64 plus 100. And finally, square rooting both sides gives me a distance of 164 yeah. square root. Okay, now to me, this is easier. Simply counting how far you've gone in the x direction from one point to the next, and counting how far you've gone in the y direction, and then squaring and square rooting. Okay, it's basically the same thing as your distance formula. Here is the distance you've traveled in the x. Here's the distance you've traveled in the y. You square them, you square root them, you add them, and we're done. Now, midpoint from 7 minus 3, that's 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 1 plus 9 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5, so the midpoint would be at 2 comma 5. Right in here-ish, 2 comma 5, midpoint. So midpoint is very easy. Add them together and divide by 2. So our last one, I'm going to do the same thing, but it's a little bit different. So A is at root 5, 4, which is, let's say that's right here. Here's A. B is at 5 root 5, negative 2. We'll say that's over here. So 5 root 5 is more than 1 root 5, so it has to be to the right. Yeah, almost, almost got there. Close enough. So I'm going to draw my right triangle and count how far I've gone in the x and in the y. So in the x, I was at 1 roots of 5, and then I ended up at 5 roots of 5. That means I've gone 4 roots of 5 units in the x direction. From 1 root 5 to 5 root 5 is 4 root 5 units. If I were at positive 4 and ended up at negative 2, that means I've gone 6 units. So now let's apply our friend Pythagoras, and I'm going to do it down here just for space. d squared equals 6 squared plus parentheses 4 roots of 5 squared. Okay, I'm squaring one side length rather than both of these things. So let's see, that's 36. Now when you square a mixed radical, you have to square the number and square the radical. So 4 squared is 16. Root 5 squared is just 5. 16 times 5 is 80. So if you're using a calculator, parenthesize this thing and then square it, or you're not going to get the right thing out of your calculator. So d squared equals 116. So the distance in between these points is the square root of 116 units. A little bit more than 10, less than 11, somewhere in between there. Midpoint, we have 1 root of 5 plus 5 roots of 5 divided by 2. Sorry, this is root 5. And we have 4 minus 2 over 2. So 1 root of 5 plus 5 roots of 5 is 6 roots of 5. I'm going to come up here. Sorry, it's looking kind of gross. but 6 roots of 5 divided by 2. Numbers divide numbers. So 6 roots of 5 over 2 is 3 roots of 5. That's the midpoint. And 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 over 2 is 1. So we have a midpoint at 3 roots of 5, comma, 1, or somewhere in here-ish. Midpoint. Okay, so that's how we do the distance formula, a.k.a. Pythagorean theorem, and finding the midpoints of all of these things. So there's our distance formula and uh, the midpoint formula. Okay, you can use distance formula if you like, or you can make a right triangle and use Pythagoras. Okay, either way, you probably will get the same answer, as long as you square root at the end. So here's a bunch of solving stuff, and I might do these individually, or I might do them all together. But solving quadratics, and in this case, radicals. Okay, so we solve a radical, which is a square root, by doing its opposite. 
the opposite of square rooting is squaring. So we're going to square both sides in order to get rid of this radical. When you square a radical, the radical goes away, and you have the radicand left. And then on this side, we have x squared. So 3x plus 18 equals x squared. I have a x squared, so I'm going to make it into a quadratic equation, bringing everything onto the right side with my x squared. So 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 18. Okay, hopefully this is a factorable quadratic. Are there numbers that multiply to give you negative 18 and add to give negative 3? Okay, you should know those as negative 6 and positive 3 are the two factors that do that. So I can change my standard form quadratic into an factor of um, x minus 6 and x plus 3. So that means my answers are going to be positive 6 and negative 3. So now that we have our answers, we can go back in and check and see. Is 6 a solution? Is 3 times 6 plus 18, which is 18 plus 18, that's 36, is the square root of 36 equal to 6? Yes, it is. So 6 is definitely an answer. What about negative 3? Here we have negative 9 plus 18 is positive 9. Is the square root of positive 9 equal to negative 3? Probably not, so we're going to throw away negative 3 and just keep your answer of 6. Okay, even though both of these are answers, your solution comes out to be 6. Okay, yes, technically you can argue when the square root is positive and negative, so take that up with your teacher if you want to make that argument, but um, just know that it might not hold water depending on your quality and niceness of teacher. Anyway, okay, the second one's the same. We're going to square both sides. In this case, we're squaring x minus 1. Okay, this whole entire thing gets squared. You only square one thing at a time. So 6x plus 1 equals, I hope you know how to square this. Squaring means multiply it by itself. It does not mean distribute. So we have an x squared. We have a minus 2x, and we have a plus 1. Okay, x times x is x squared. Here's minus 1x. Here's one more minus x. Here is a positive 1. So once again, we're going to make this into a quadratic. 0 equals x squared minus 8x. And in this case, minus 1 minus 1 is a 0, so we don't have anything else there. So this is factorable. These both have an x in common. So we'll factor out the x, and we get x minus 8. Okay, so it's not quadratically factorable, but it is common factors. Both of these terms have an x in them, so we can factor that out. So x either equals 0 or positive 8. So let's plug it in and see. Um, 6 times 8, that's 48, plus 1 is 49. The square root of 49 is 7. 8 minus 1 is 7, so 8 works. Perfect. 0, that's a 0. Square root of 1 is negative 1. Probably not 0, so we'll just keep 8 as our solution. Okay, once again, argue with your teacher if you want to whether the square root of negative positive 1 can be negative um, and see what they say. Okay, but for now, we'll just go with positive 8 as the right answer. Okay, so solving square roots, you solve them by squaring. And then you have to check your answers to make sure that they both work. If not, throw one away. Okay, here, notice we have 4x squared minus 6x equals 30. In fact, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, so pause while I increase the size. Come back up here. 4x squared minus 6x equals 30. Okay, this is a quadratic, but it doesn't have an x. So we're going to solve this one by square rooting. So we're going to get everything away from the x squared term. 4x squared equals 36. Our next step is to divide by 4. Okay, it's easier to divide than it is to square root. And you only want to square root one thing. So here, we square rooting both sides, and x equals positive and negative.
Okay, so if you don't have an x in your quadratic, then you just solve it for x squared by square rooting. Similarly, over here, we will minus 15 from both sides to get everything away from the squared thing. x plus 3 squared equals negative 9. We will square root both sides to solve our square. x plus 3 equals. So the square root of negative 9 is a, an imaginary number positive and negative 3i. Your calculator can't take the square root of negative 9, but we can imagine that there is a solution. So subtracting 3, x finally equals negative 3 plus and minus 3i. Because you can't combine a number with an imaginary thing, so you write it down here as the complex number. Okay, and then these last ones are true quadratics. Um, so we're going to try to factor this one, even though the quadratic formula will always work. Factoring is a very easier way to do it if it's factorable. So there are numbers that multiply to give you 8 and add to give 9. So either x plus 8 has to be 0 or x plus 1 has to be 0, which means x equals negative 8 or negative 1. Okay, and both of these things work because there's no square roots lying around to mess things up. So if your quadratic is factorable, then that's a beautiful thing, and you can simply factor it and do it. Okay, let's say this one is not factorable, and let's use a quadratic formula. Because you can't think of numbers or whatever. So negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2 times a. <clears throat> okay, fantastic formula. It works for every single quadratic to solve no matter what. You can get positive, negative, imaginary answers, all kinds of stuff. So here we have your a value. Here's your b value. There's your c value. So plugging into the formula, the negative of 8 plus and minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 3, all divided by 2 times 3. <clears throat> okay, now the only thing about this is it takes up a lot of space. So let's do it down here. Plus and minus 8 squared is 64 plus negative 4 times 3 times negative 3 is 36 all divided by 6. <clears throat> oh good, that looks like it's going to be a nice number. Negative 8 plus and minus the square root of 100 over 6. So 100 is square rootable. So we have negative 8 plus 10 divided by 6 and also negative 8 minus 10 divided by 6. Okay, there's your plus and your minus. Literally do both operations separately. Let me see if I can make some more room. <clears throat> Negative 8 plus 10, that's 2. 2 over 6 is 1 third, is one answer. Negative 8 minus 10 is negative 18, divided by 6 is negative 3. So there are your answers, 1 third and negative 3. Okay, which must have meant that this was actually factorable if you get nice pretty answers. Oh well, quadratic formula is nice enough to know anyway. Okay, the last thing here on this page is the discriminant. The discriminant is the b squared minus 4ac part of your quadratic formula. And it tells you the nature of your answers. Okay, it can be positive, it can be equal to zero, or it can be negative. Those are the three types of answers that you're going to get. And depending on whether your answer is positive, zero, or negative, you're going to get two, one, or no real solutions, and in that case, two imaginary ones. So let's work through this and see what we get. b squared, negative 6 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 9. Negative 6 squared is positive 36. Minus 36 is 0. So if you remember, when you get a 0 value, that means that you're going to have one real solution as the answer. Okay, the graph looks like this. It's going to cross and exactly hit your axis exactly one time. 
which is why you only have one solution because it only crosses your x-axis once. Okay, moving over here, let's see. 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3. 1 minus 8 times 3 is 24 is negative 23. Okay, this is a negative value, so we're going to have two fake or two imaginary solutions. Imaginary solutions. Okay, graphically speaking, what's going to happen is this graph will not actually cross your x-axis. Okay, so when it crosses your x-axis, you have real solutions. When it doesn't cross it, you have no real solutions. They're imaginary because we need solutions anyway. Okay, so zeros give you one real solution. Negative numbers give you two imaginaries, which means positive ones give you two reals. Okay, the graph actually crosses it twice. So hopefully this was helpful and you understand a little bit more about solving quadratics and the discriminants and all the other fantastic things. Have a fabulous day. Goodbye.